Hello, everyone. This is Frank Jernigan. I mean, I am Frank Jernigan, and this is the meeting of the Franco Sweater Knitters. And I'd like to welcome everyone here. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hi, Wally. Hi, Frank. Hi, Joe Ellen. Hi, Susan. Hello. I have mm -hmm. to say, I met Susan here, last so week at the KGA conference. And see how that drain comes down. Some somebody's talking. Oh, it's happening. I don't know. Okay. Hope it wasn't a um all right. So I met Susan last week and um she told me that she has already knitted a Franco sweater. And you can tell us about that in a little bit. Now who did I not everything got rearranged. Hi Cindy. <laughs> Hi Frank. <laughs> Hi, Maggie. Hi. Hi, Sandra. And hello, Ron. Hello. I'm just in for a minute. I'm oh, sorry. To, I want to start this meeting with a, a, a little announcement. Um, I I know. Come on. Oh, dear. Uh oh. Oh, dear. We love you. <laughs> I know. I've been on the verge of tears since the election. Oh. I feel we've reached the end of democracy in America and and <laughs> evil won over hate. Yeah. I mean evil won over love, love <laughs> hate won over love. I can't even talk. I am devastated by the result of the election. And I almost canceled the meeting today. I don't want this to turn into a political discussion. I don't want anybody to try to make me feel better because they feel differently. I know that this is a large group in a country that is greatly divided down the center. And both sides feel that they are right and the other side is absolutely wrong. It's and. I understand all of that. So maybe this group is divided and I don't want to start an argument and I don't want people to try to make me feel better. But you have to know that I'm upset. Thank you for sharing yes. your yourself with us. <clears throat> and we feel like we can share ourselves with you on any topic. You absolutely that's wonderful. Can. If you want to talk about your feelings about the election, that's fine. But let's not talk about <laughs> politics. And by all means, let's do not argue with each other. No point should be confronted with a counterpoint. That's exactly because right. this is a knitting group and we are brought together by our craft. And that yeah. that is what is unifying to us, no matter what our political views are or our hopes of the future are. So that said, I turn it over to you all. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thanks for sharing, Frank. Yeah. Yes, right. Yes. I, I always say like knitters as, as wherever they fall down on the political spectrum are generally a group of people who wake up every day and want to be kind on purpose. And I believe that. Yes, and I have been on the verge of tears so for the past couple of days, feeling a little hopeless. And yes. with what I do for work, it's a little difficult um, because I get paid to get yelled at <laughs> for a living. And yes, I do get paid to get yelled at. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, it's been stressful. I get it. Yeah. Been a roller coaster here note, all week long. On a even more positive at LGBT. note, we got a dog this week. Yeah. Oh yay! Hey, okay. You got a doggy. Yes, Ron. You you had your Chiquita. Calliope. Are you still come, here, Ron? Come, come here. Let me. Oh, Ron. Let me. Oh, you're here. Here you are. Ron's not here. 
He had oh. Calliope in the shop um, from Anzula that they were Hello. doing a trunk show. I'm back. There you are. Yes, I'm I back. would like if, if there's time. I, I can't stay for long because we're in the middle of the trunk show, but I'd like to. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. oh look at it. Oh, God. I have something almost as good as a cute puppy, and it's Calliope <laughs> from Anzula. If you'd like to meet the founder oh, of Anzula, if you're familiar with their yarns. Uh, yes, let me spotlight you. Sure. See. Yes, please, whenever you're ready. There you go. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi. This is, this is uh, Hi, Calliope, the the owner and founder of Anzula and sister company Mod Yarns. You're working on a Mod Yarns. Yarn. I am. I'm All working right. with uh, Little in the Middle. So, oh, oh wow, wonderful. Um, oh, that fun. I don't know how many of you have worked with or are familiar with Anzula yarns, but they're one of our best sellers. We are shipping Anzula oh, basically every day around here. Uh, people love it. Very, very luxe, luxury. Mm -hmm. So um, it's you're already like 21 years old now. It's something like that. It's 21, 22. I've kind of oh the goodness. last few years. Have been wow. confusing. 2002 is when we started. So 22. Ooh. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say hello and have you guys meet one of our yarn contacts. And I was telling her a little bit about Franco and your and your system i'll show off some of my sweaters for her in a minute so she knows what we're all about around here yeah yeah this is one of his that was just finished we're not it's seeing very you. nice I'm this is a franco you're not seeing me i unpinned myself okay There's... yeah there you go look at that so it's this all custom fit, gorgeous set and sleeve architecture, wow. set to your swatch specifications and your gorgeous. measurements. And, yeah. um, just some picking up going on around here, but otherwise yeah. a seamless wow. set and sleeve. How cool! Yeah, it is. And <laughs> and Ron always helps me with my new favorite Franco. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you get to know people's favorite yarns over time, mm. don't you? <laughs> Well, it's a good color on you too. Something. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I like Let me share another your picture of it. it. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? That's so easy. Like bright blue. <laughs> Here's a picture. Some oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. how nice! Isn't no. that beautiful? Look at the perfect fit. You do yeah. the foam things down the. Oh, I mean, because now that I have the 58 year old middle. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, the, the you look the perfect shape. I, thank you're you. You're not getting older. You're getting better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the I do a faux seam on my Franco's or any sweater in the round because I feel it. It with my body type, it just it fits better. Just hangs better, nice. right? So. Um, but it, it literally looks like it could be a store bought sweater. It does. And, it really does. and that's and that's mm. the Frank's genius. Well, you know. I don't know if you guys are interested in before we head out taking a quick swoop around and seeing what kind of yarns and Zula and Mod yarns does while Calliope is here in the sure. shop. Let's do mm -hmm. that. Okay. I hope no one gets motion sick, but we'll take a little look. <laughs> so Zula was her original. Uh, company and and classic yarn line mod yarns was founded more recently for more sort of funky fun colorful textured novelty yarn novelty yarns um so let me turn myself around Bing. so oh wow lots of just really oh, lovely goodness. stuff what we carry the most of here is her line of merino cashmere and nylon uh blend yarns which are very very popular this is a mod yarn mm. in this like chenille Ooh, look at that very, oh, very, fun. very fun so when um when i was in seattle last year when i uh, when we met up i saw this being worked on in their in their booth and so big minky things Lots of beautiful stuff. Lots and mm. lots of beautiful stuff. This, oh, you know, this is straight up ZK. This yarn here is called For Better or Worsted. 
And aside from some of the local hand dyed stuff that people pick up here, this is my number one selling yarn in the shop. Oh, wow. And this, uh, yeah, people love this yarn. I like the name of it for better or worse. <laughs> for better or worse, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's bringing some glittery ones. There's a 100% Targi. Ooh, oh, that's a really oh. lovely one, too. I think yeah. I would like that one. You, this, this is definitely a Sumner yarn. It is wool. Mm -hmm. uh, and like everything that is great about wool, it's. Ooh, look at that pretty thing. And it's 100% oh, wow. American. Um, it is. Oh, cool. Tar <laughs> oh, cute. And she just finished her bolero. Oh, wow. oh nice. <laughs> nice. That's gorgeous. Very cute. So, yeah. Very um, fashionable. You might look for a skein of that, Sumner. It might be right up your. It's it's the grist you like. It is wooly. Mm. And is it that is. the collar work sweater that's made out of that? Yes. Mm. No way. Wow. These are all girdy, right? What's the weight? Yeah, all those samples. It's fingering, but it's very bouncy. It can be worked as a sport, also. So heavy fingering to sport, very bouncy. Is this woven Open. piece? It. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that just looks exactly like you, Sumner. Yeah, I'm in. It I really is. Hound's tooth in that. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be pretty? Oh wow! Look at that. That's nice. So it's and you know, you know, guys know how hard like breed specific wools are to come by or yarns mm -hmm. are to come by. Um, like fiber can be easy to find wools or yarns ready to go yeah so that's what we got going on if, if you um i well i can put the her, her website in the uh chat if anyone would like to check out the unzula yarns you can uh, get them direct from her you can always place a special order through me at the twisted skein i highly recommend it they are since the day we opened, uh, her yarns have been our top selling category. They're really, really beautiful. Mm. Yes, please do put it in Wonderful. chat, and I'll put it in the description of the video when I post it. Um, yes, so, thanks for that. Wow. Yeah, she's just from up in Fresno, so we're neighbors in the Central Valley of California here. And it's her company. It is indeed. Oh, is yeah. That she's the she's fun. the founder. She's the dyer. Or the 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 original dyer. She's she employs uh, people full time. It makes it a point to pay them a living wage to work at her yarn company. Mm. Uh, really, just an amazing company. Great people. Wow, it was a dimple. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that that mm. yarn you would love is called Gertie. G e r t i e. Um, Give it a Google and take a look. I can probably get a skein to you if you want me to be a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get to the chat on an iPad? It should oh, be you just touch the wallpaper and your mm -hmm. menu mm -hmm. uh, up on the so up on the top. I think it's right. on the top. Ah, under more. There we go. Okay. All right, I'll stick a link to to Anzula in here. Um, I would love it if you check them out. Comes from me, highly, highly recommended. And, and people have been loving the trunk show today. So I wanted to give you guys a little tour. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's lovely. I'm knitting with the Dreamy right now, the Anzula Dreamy. Oh, really? What do you yes, think? And that's, I, I love it. That's the one that I did my uh, fingerless knits oh. for my aunt. Yes. Um, Calliope. One of the participants is knitting with Dreamy right now. Cool. <laughs> oh, oh, I yeah. see it right now. Right. Show, show it up. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This is a, a ranunculus, and mm -hmm. it's it's with uh, with the Dreamy. And then I'm doing um, uh, I'm, I'm holding another little skein of um, a lace weight with it. But nice. I've knitted before with the Dreamy and really liked it. I did. Um, well, I actually did my very my very first Franco. I did with the, with Dreamy, um, two strands held together. Was the what is the composition of Dreamy? Superwash merino, cashmere, and silk. 
Mm. And it's the cashmere that's just it's just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so if you go in and you, and you look at Ravelry under the um, things, you'll see it's it's one. It was kind of like a speckled. What was the name of it? It had a funny Dawn name. Um, or dark dark matter. Dark matter, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was. It was just great. She loved it, and she she's way outgrown it now. But um, that was the first one that I did, and then I knit fingerless mitts for my aunt out of and I, she, I had her pick the color I showed them to her and she chose and it was just this lovely brown black different colors but the name was sexy I didn't mm. tell her the name <laughs> I just let her choose that <laughs> is actually also an incredibly like, popular color like here 89 89 years old but she <laughs> she loved the mints. <laughs> yeah. no, sexy is a beautiful taupe color and it is, is one of the most gorgeous, popular colors it's a gorgeous here. color it really is and it just yeah. kind of goes with everything it's mm -hmm. it um kind of reads as a as a neutral that she could wear it with whatever she was wearing really well so yeah so i saw that you're carrying it with another yarn and um uh, if a lot of people like me are allergic to mohair we have a mohair alternative called Hazy that is um, baby Surrey alpaca and silk. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. that's Hazy? Hazy. Mm -hmm. Hazy. Okay. All right. We'll write that so. down. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you had something on the needles. What a fun coincidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I wanted something just soft and fun to, to work with. So I started I would it, do it actually last Thursday because I'd had these. Sometimes I buy yarns just because I like the colors in the squish. <laughs> and these were some that I did. And then I'm like, I'm just going to need something with it. And so I did. <coughs> so thank you. It is. It, you it's a, it's a lovely it is. It's a lovely combination of um, fibers and, and it just feels good in your hands. We did not give her five dollars. We did not call each other to work this out beforehand. This was... <laughs> well, well, we really appreciate met, you dropping in and, and yeah, I met her though when when you were up here for Vogue knitting in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you look familiar. Yeah. Right. Thank you, everyone. I'll All make right. sure that make it Have a good show. I'm yeah. finally back at the yarn shop, but. Doing a trunk show. So, <laughs> a trunk show. Today, Another show. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Ron. Thank you. I'll hopefully next week I'll be here for a whole meeting. All right. <laughs> wow. And that was fun. We should have feel yeah. every that was week. A, very nice. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Yes. So Franco, your sweater actually kind of helped me get through all of that crazy emotion, just trying to finish it up and do a little self-care uh -huh. like and finish my sweater because, um, yeah, I'm someone who's done a lot of uh, activism and, uh, you know, met three presidents. I've met two Supreme Court justices. I've done a lot of work. Uh, really? And sometimes it feels like you're throwing it all away and you get sick of fighting. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, and it doesn't matter what part of the spectrum you fall on. You just need to do the right thing every day. There you go. That's right. Um, but, yeah, um, I just so enjoyed this sweater. It was just wonderful and for this group and all the little tips and tricks you've given me to kind of make my knitting better and um wow so much love in this room right yeah that's thank right. you everybody you're welcome we try to be supportive yeah did we lose uh sandra yeah she seemed to be in her car she was driving she yeah yeah had okay. some difficulty she we lost sandra car. hopefully she'll come back if she can yeah, so we were talking about cable flare before you hit the record button. Oh, yeah. and Tell us about cable flare. I was hoping you would forget that, Sumner. No, because I need to visit that. Because, like, I've knit a lot of cable, right? It really has. In, like, old school, like, handwritten paragraphs of do this, do this, do this, pages and pages of, you know, now you're on row 148, and they type it all out. So I've done that, and I'm 
just learning charting and how to read cable off of a chart. So that's yeah. something that is, you know, you only knit for 35 years and you learn something new every day, you know, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Um, so now I'm learning about like cable flare where on the cable sweaters that I've done and I look back at the patterns, they actually built in to the instructions what to do, which cared for the cable flare, but I didn't know I was doing it. Mm. Right. Now, when you're looking at a chart, it doesn't necessarily build in the instruction on how to care for the cable flare. That's right. So now in boot camp, looking at it, I'm going, oh, will you look at that? And my question conceptually in my brain to stop the cable from going out, your she has the first row cast on subtracting the number of stitches needed to get to gauge the difference between stock net and cable. You increase in that first row so it stops that flare, but then you're just knitting in pattern. And then the last row, decrease. you decrease. Mm -hmm and where you place them. And I'm like, well, son of a gun, isn't that like handwritten out in my old, like Aaron King yeah. sweaters? Yeah, interesting. But working on homework this week. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that, that the term cable flare confused me at the beginning because it's not the cable portion that flares. The cable <laughs> portion right. pulls in because there's fewer stitches or there's more stitches to the inch for cables yeah. than there is for like stockinette. So it it would it looks like it pulls it in. And it's the other the the ends that are flaring out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it causes it because of that um, difference in your stitch ratio for stockinette and for cables. Yeah, I finally got it where cables are 3D and stockinette is like 2D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they got to pull the stitches from somewhere. So if you're going to go 3D, like it pulls it in from the sides, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Did she... Did yeah, she yeah. also talk about because this was one that I have to I have to really work on it when I'm doing it. It doesn't it doesn't come easy to me. I am dyslexic. Um, but depending on which way your cables are going, how you would do your increases or your decreases if you make them yes. left or right. And she does that really well, but I have to like stop and think of okay, I'm doing my increases here to get started. Which way is my cable going to go so <laughs> that I make my increase lean the right way? And right. Um, I think yeah, she does. some yeah. of ours, she, she had us do it even that it's like, okay, just, just do them all to the left or do them all to the right at first. So you could see, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's not the, that's not the right one. You could see the difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So that was really mm. interesting. And it does, it just makes it, when you do it correctly, it just makes it seamless and it flows and your thing just goes right up instead of going, eh, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like <laughs> instead, of an, instead of an hourglass, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, very interesting. I'm sitting here looking at an Afghan I did about four or five years ago before I knew anything about cable flare. And I look at it and I'm thinking, oh me, I wish <laughs> I had known better. <laughs> but yeah, but they don't tell you in the pattern. They, yeah. You know, they don't. Uh, they don't tell you, but sometimes, like you said, the patterns do all do include it. It's like, okay, you knit along, you know, doing your stockinette, and then you do an increase row where you do, you know, knit 20, increase, knit 20, increase, you know, whatever. And then yeah. you do the cable part, and it works out. Um, so yeah. sometimes they take care of it, but they don't explain it. They don't tell it, you, you why. Know, yeah, they don't they, tell, they you don't tell you why, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
there's a process to go through to figure out how many uh, stitches mm -hmm. to add at the bottom and decrease mm -hmm. at the top of where a cable, the bottom is where the cable starts after doing stockinette. You know, if it if you're doing stockinette and then you insert a cable in it, the difference between the stockinette and the cable's gauge is drastic. Yeah. And so would anybody like to describe the process of how you figure out how many stitches to put in the increase? I think the easiest way is if you swatch your cable and just do your cable, if your cable, say, is 15 stitches wide or 16 stitches wide, right? However many cables. Now, over 20 inches. Now you do a, just a regular stockinette over 20 inches. So the best way to do it would be to block them both out. Don't overblock them. Then you take your cable and you put it on top of your stockinette and you see how many more stitches do you need to get to four inches. That's right. So you take that number and that's your increase decrease number over say your three stitch rope cable. You put your increases in the turn, so in the center. So if it's a two by two, you put your increases and decreases between those two stitches. So yeah, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, Susan yeah. Bryan has some- You basically measure along. the width of the cable and then you measure that width in stockinette and the cable might be a certain number of stitches wide. Maybe it's an inch and there's eight stitches in the cable and it's an inch and your stockinette is um, only four stitches for an inch. So you want the inch to stay an inch. So you have to mm -hmm. add two stitches to the cable to make it the width of the stockinette. I think yeah. that, I think that's right. Yeah, did it work? Boy, this is getting technical. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's actually well, a designer's problem. Um, unless you're using a pattern that didn't account for it that needed to. Yeah. Then you're correcting yeah. the or designer's if de issue. If you're <laughs> designing your own, like if you're designing right. your own Franco. And you want yeah. to put a cable in it. You have to figure that out. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I have a dark green cable sweater that I do love in Barico Vintage. And it has a significant amount of cable flare at the neck in the shoulder. And the pattern did not adjust for it. Really? Um, now I still love the sweater. It still looks great, but it has a lot of cable flare at the neck. And had I known right. what was going on there, I would have adjusted for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. well, it's yeah. all new to me, so uh, it's nice I still to love hear the about sweater. it. I don't think it shows up too well on video. I would love to see if you all would be patient with me, because I know where the sweater is. Um, so yeah. I could show it. Mm. This is where show and tell is important because right. it really yeah. makes it make sense. I have seen cable flare actually used effectively to shape a garment a couple of times where it was a pattern for a woman's um, sweater and they did a cable uh, that was right around where the waist was. They did a cable section mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. just gently pulled it in. It wasn't a lot of cables, but it mm -hmm. just gently pulled it in. Instead of doing decreases or whatever waist shaping, they just used that cable and then it went went back out and it, it actually worked well. Yeah. yeah. So here's the sweater and without overcompensating by pulling it, you can see the top of the sweater, it it kind of flares out mm -hmm. and it's thinner mm -hmm. in the middle. Uh -huh. Right. Uh. Right. And now it did compensate on the ribbing, but it didn't on the top. 
but see the thing with the regular ribbing at the bottom it's a lot of ribbing you know it's mm -hmm. several inches so it's going to be able to pull in and ribbing has a different gauge than stockinette too yeah they built in decreases in the pattern there they did yeah. they wrote the decreases in yeah there. they wrote the decreases in there they didn't they didn't do anything on the top which and I, lo I love the sweater it's a great sweater yeah right and i love a v mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with this central double decrease mm -hmm. like uh frank isn't that it? a nice one that one it just looks I so love neat that and tidy and that's frank to your credit um you certainly you you earned your tkga status uh <laughs> in my book because like this this collar that you have and how you have it bound off this this has a handmade quality to it that looks really professional right well i did put quite a bit of work into how to do the v at the bottom and get that line up this up the center of it yeah mm -hmm. and how to get the angle right i i don't know how many v's i knit it <laughs> to finally come up with the pattern that I came up with. But yeah. No, really I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Yeah. Now I'm a pretty good knitter. the instructions pre precisely. But following a pattern so precisely and have it come out looking so good is just, that's you. That's you. That's not my knitting. Yeah. You know, so thank you. That's so <laughs> sweet to say. Susan, I don't want to put you on the spot, but would you be willing to tell us about your experience knitting a Franco sweater or how you liked the sweater? Well, I love it and I'm not wearing it. I almost did, but it's pretty warm here in Scottsdale this afternoon. Oh, yeah. And the um, the Franco sweater I did was out of a DK weight yarn. And so it's not like heavy, but it was a little too warm. I'm wearing a fingering weight this afternoon. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, do you want me to go get it and show everyone? Oh, if you can, sure. that would be wonderful. I can. Oh, um, we'd love it. it. It won't take me too long because um, everything, well, uh, my um, my setup here, I this is my first Zoom call in several years. And I think it's my first interactive one in this kind of way that it wasn't <laughs> family. And um, I had this weird setup so that I could be seen. <laughs> Fine. You did well. Yeah, it looks like it worked great. Yeah. yeah. Mary, are you on to white? Did you finish the reds? Oh, <laughs> there's some more. This is the last <laughs> no. red. The last red. Oh, yay. <laughs> Hold it up and again. I have eight whites to do. Hold, Hold it up, up the again, red Mary. so we can see. Can you hold it up again? Oh, sure. There you oh, go. Oh, you're getting close even on that one. That's good. Oh, no, nice. <laughs> you're going to be like Garter Stitch champion over there. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody wants a Garter Stitch square, we know who to go to. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> there you go, Susan. Yeah. Hey. So, uh, we did the V-neck. Oh, very nice. Oh, how yeah. nice. We did the rolled oh, edge. Oh. It's, um, Kind of oh. what I wanted for the sweater, and right. then I did um, lace at the. Oh, you did lace! Isn't oh, that beautiful? Oh wow! And the oh, nice. um, and the bottom. Nice treatment oh, with the rolled hem. Very um, nice. The the really the important thing is I have narrow shoulders, and like yoke sweaters are really not good for me. This one is really weird at the top. Um, but this just fits so it because it's to my measurements, it's just perfect. Plus, yep. um, as most knitters do from time to time, I I uh, cheat on my gauge. I make my gauge slot, and I think I've done it right, and I count it. And if I'm working to a pattern, I'll go, "Oh yeah, yeah, I did get it," you know. And this was, um, the, you know, you did it was your your gauge swatch you didn't have to play any games with it at all and um <laughs> right yeah you just knit it and, and that's what you're going to make your sweater out of there you go yeah and so uh you know it was um i really i really appreciated that part and i really appreciate the way the shoulders fit um mm -hmm. 
So I, I, I need to do another one. I, I get, um, I get sidetracked very easily. <laughs> I'm oh, like a crow, you know, anything I see shiny. A bling. <laughs> yeah, anything <laughs> shiny. Um, or, you know, so I'm always buying yarn for a sweater and then doing it in that sweater, you know, in the pattern. And, um, but I have a few things here that I think would be, um, the right thing to do with, with another Franco sweater. Just have to get the swatching done. Yeah. Well, at Franco, least you don't have to match somebody else's gauge. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> One swatch and you're done. <laughs> well, and nice Franco, like, you know, with, with me, the, why the Franco's work so good. I have bigger shoulders. And if I just knit a regular guy's sweater that's a pattern from Ravelry, I look like I'm wearing a bell. <laughs> You know, oh. <laughs> so I have to be able to customize it a little bit so that the sleeves don't over pull up because right. that set in sleeve means that when I lift my arms, my sweater doesn't expose me. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. old for that. You know, <laughs> so I lift up my arms and my sweater stays put. You know, that's brilliant. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that, Susan. You're welcome. I, I get comments whenever I wear it uh, about how well it fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lovely yarn too. Very pretty. The first, the first time we sat down for dinner at the conference, I happened to sit next to Susan, and she looked at me and she said, "You don't know me, but I know you." It <laughs> <laughs> can and be I scary at your first. Sweaters, and I love it. <laughs> so, and then. Um, a woman named Ray next to her said, is that the Franco? You're Franco? <laughs> <laughs> I felt yeah. like a celebrity yeah. for like 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, you were a celebrity the whole conference. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, the concept is just it, very intriguing to knitters. Everyone that I talked to about it who didn't already know about it was like, really, that is so interesting. And, um, you know, we're all, I mean, most of us, many of us are always trying to tweak a sweater to make it that kind of perfect sweater. And right. it's hard to tweak someone else's pattern. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, the, I'm, I'm working on my homework for boot camp, Frank, and then I think I'll be casting on someone's hoodie yeah. if that oh, makes yeah. you feel better. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Not for lack of, I don't have anything else going on. But um, yeah, I'm excited about it. Boot camp homework first. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, wearing uh, a Franco and I'm knitting two Francos that, oh, I'm, wow. that I'm altering just a little bit. I think that's oh. kind of record, Joellen. You just you just won the record. For most yeah. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I love that color. Is that yeah, one it's very knitting? nice. Is that this the one is... you were knitting when you were in the group? Yes. That yes. is wonderful. Thank you. I, I love it. It's it, like you say, the fit is outrageous. It is uh, a deeper V because I went with the Knitwiz uh, assistance on that. And um, I don't know if I can show you or not. I chose to put um, a lace with bobbles on oh, three yeah. corners. Oh, how nice. And then the bottom, I don't know if you can see it or oh, not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that shows oh, up great. Love that. It. Oh, wow. Very nice. Yeah. That shows up great. It's been it, so it comfortable. Out, it turned out beautifully, but mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell on you. She did oh. whine a little bit when she was doing the bobbles because she had trouble with those. I but do then whine. She finally got it. She persevered. I, I whine but, with my whine. My whine. But I any whine. of us that has done bobbles know whining. I mean, yes, it's, I, it's, I have done many bobbles. Whining. They are just hard. They they can suck. <laughs> Well, Kathy was so uh, sweet in assisting me on that. It was like, 
I was uh, I like to knit the Norwegian pearl, and so uh, the other sweater of hers I made there was a whole lot of pearling, and I said, should should I just go back to normal English pearl? No, just stick to it, and stick to it. So I learned a lot making all these things and sticking to my nor my uh, continental type knitting. Oh, fabulous! Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, that is yeah. a lovely mm -hmm. column on you, too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That new the crown. Yeah, nice. You said I you like it, too. Sweater. You're working on a Franco, too? Or two? Yes, Frank? I'm working on, uh, I'm making my two little grandson's vests with oh. this. I'll show you the back because you can see more of it. It has got to be the softest stuff I have ever used. Uh, Cindy was making a sweater. And I admired her thread. And I, I don't know if it was her little pretty white vest or not, but so I immediately went out and tried to buy it. This is absolutely not what she was using, but it's turned out to be so lovely. It's a tube, and with they say that they shoot fibers onto it. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. not it's sure blown, what that means. It's, it's, it's a, a blown yarn. Fiber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and oh my goodness, it's just like a little cotton ball. So I've uh, I, I did not attach any sleeves. I'm just making a V neck, and then I'm making it their length, and then I'm going. It'll be a big uh, armhole for them, but I think that'll be a good thing because it's just going to be there, keep them their ch little chest warm. Keep their chest warm. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, that's me all over. <laughs> <laughs> Not. You're good, Meme. <laughs> so that's that's my three. What I'm wearing, and I, I've been all over the place. I took a nap in it, and it's just go. <laughs> right with it. Uh, this, all this time change and this. Uh, I'm in a different time zone now. I was telling the group earlier, I have no idea what time it is. Most time, I just, I'm tired. I'll go to bed. And if I'm not, I'll stay up. I, 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 any kind of regularity. That's fun. <clears throat> Maggie, what are you working on? Well, I, finished I keep this seeing hat. you look down. Oh, yeah. I finished the hat. The Oh, the yay. Serena was making. Oh, oh nice. How nice. Those are fun. I've made so many of those. That's I love the, them. Is it right. 1898 hat? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. This is for my uncle in Salt Lake. So hopefully it'll fit him too. So oh, he'll I love better it. well. He'll yeah. love it. Yeah. 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 Amazingly warm. They're yeah, right. A, right. I love it. I is love it just my ears covers right yeah. where you need it. Yeah. Exactly. And here's a here's my social knitting thing as a cowl. Oh, oh, yeah, it's pretty oh, how nice. Wow. So I couldn't that you sold a one. I was I couldn't get it. Some with the decreases with the twisted stitch. It was I don't know. I just couldn't. So this is much easier. And then the ribbing, it just shapes like this. You know the way oh, the ribbing cool. goes. Oh wow! How it goes. That's cool. neat. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that's that's cool, and it's easy. Nice. Oh good. Easy is always good. Right. <laughs> Wally, what are you knitting? You haven't shown me. I'm taking a break from knitting. I am making a corner to corner. Oh, oh wow. For a friend. For he, has a, he has a gray and white room and a little beige in it. So uh -huh. oh, nice. I'm going to make that for them for Christmas. So okay. he said yeah, his, nice. he said he, he got his aunt, gave his aunt all the yarn, and she never made it. So. He said, well, you know what? I got more yarn than I need in my life. I'll go make one. <laughs> so. don't, don't say that out loud. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I resemble that remark. But, you know, the other thing was um, the other morning, because, you know, when you knit, you throw all your yarn next to you in the chair. So the other morning I got up and two balls of it rolled across the living room. And I'm saying, did I kick them? So I went and picked one up and brought it back to the chair. And the other one was stuck behind the TV. Well, apparently I have a mouse that decided he wanted my yarn. Oh, <laughs> so, oh. so I had to go and 
retrieve it from under the table there. So Goodness. <laughs> that's wow. funny. Yeah. So. Well, I hope you've set the trap for the mouse. No, I put mothballs around. They hate that smell. Oh. Wow. So, so I threw them under the under the TV <laughs> and, and and the and and the couch and everything else. I'm saying now to come in. <laughs> but I hate that smell too. I'd hate to do that to my whole house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, but unfortunately, it works. So. <laughs> I just don't know how they get in. That's that's what mind boggles me. So, yeah. And the sweater I'm wearing, Frank, is a leisure arts top down. Uh, what do you call them? Raglan. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty yarn too, Wally. Yeah. That's good. Oh, this was a long time ago. It was called Autumn. Oh, oh it's, yeah. it's just it's so yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Was that self striping? Yes, it was. So pretty. Yeah. It's time to start wearing sweaters. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have, a little book re I have a little book report of a new book that just is coming that just came out. Oh. It's called The Doodle Net Directory by oh, wow. Jamie Lomax. And Jamie, I guess, lives up here in the Seattle area somewhere. I've never met her, but they the local yarn store is having a book signing and a trunk show with her. Oh, um, little decks of all the little patterns on tomorrow. And so I'm going to go and get her to sign my book. Yeah, yeah but, nice. Um, Yay. This, what yarn this store 20, is that? I'm sorry? Uh, this what? is the Nifty Knitter in Issaquah. Okay. I, the, the reason I ask is if I get this me. video up in time, maybe somebody will see it and. Oh, okay. Yes. That, well, the, the, the book signing and the trunk show is from 12 to 4. Sunday, today is the 9th, so it's on the 10th. Okay. <laughs> Sunday, mm -hmm. November 10th. Mm -hmm. um, have you read the book completely? Uh, oh, no, I have not read it. I just got it a couple of days ago. I, oh, I um, okay. got a little email from them, and so I said, oh, Jerry, go and get, go and get this for me. So he was <laughs> uh, out riding his bike, and he stopped at the yarn store and then picked it up because they suggested that you get your book before so you have it ready when you do when you go to the yeah. signing and the trunk show. But um, the really nice thing that they do here in these, I'll show you a little bit, the, they have each of the little, little designs show oh, wow. in knitted up form as well as chart form. Oh wow. yeah, and they're all divided into different sections. Like that was a spring section. Here's a little floral section. Oh, pretty. Oh, it's really really cool. Mm. And all of their designs are on twenty four stitches wide, or half of that. So they're either twenty four or twelve. Okay. And mm. so that they like mix and match a lot of things which is really quite cool. Oh, they've got water stuff. Uh, these are some that I that I like a lot. The uh, the pine boughs. I think some oh. of those are just gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. Wow. And there's um, little bear paw. Here's a log cabin. We live in a log oh. house. I specifically uh, ah. like that one. <laughs> That's very cute. The fire but, looks um, cool, too. It is. It's really cool. They just have, um, and I love a bunch of the, and do you of, know a bunch it, of followers have the leaves? Where is this ah. book available? Where can you get it on? Um, you can get it online if you go to her place. What's the name of it? This is I want to say the knit company, but I'm not sure. I can I'll look it up real fast and get the book. Okay. You can get it on Amazon, but on Amazon it takes a couple weeks to get here. It's oh, not wow. one that goes real fast. Uh -huh. um, but you can order it from her uh, 
regular website and they send it out and it, it's the same price. So um, that's how it is. But it, it's, it's really a lovely book, has lots and lots of pages, explanations, talks about um, doing two colors or more colors because some of her designs are more than just two colors. They're not um, exactly, uh, they're not all exactly like the Feral, which Feral is only two colors per row. Um, but sometimes these are different. I love these color cards too. Oh, the nice. penguins, the little mm. polar bears. I mm. love the penguins. Mm. Isn't it? Mm. Aren't oh, they cute? So cute. So anyway, there's just a lot of um, a lot of neat stuff. And the other way that she does her designs, this is her first book. She has little, it's like little packs of cards. They look like playing cards. And in, in each pack, it has all these different designs. Like there's the winter pack that has kind of all the winter designs. Um, or they have a, a holiday, they have like a Halloween one and things. So uh, they have, they've they got a farm one, which I'll have to check that one out. And um, they have flowers and kind of all that sort of stuff. So, but it's, it's kind of a neat thing for doing um, color work and for kind of, mixing and matching and getting things to fit together in coordinate. I think it'd be really cool even on a, uh, a, sw a Franco sweater that you could do how many stitches do I need to cross? How do I do it? And you could do your own design or even like do a design on your, um, on mm -hmm. your sleeve, on your sleeve mm -hmm. cuff. I think it could be very cute. So I just, it was something new that I hadn't seen before. So mm -hmm. check it out. Yeah. Nice. nice. Thank you. Mm, yeah. During the week, there was a woman on YouTube that was just starting the first level of TG, the masterclass. And they returned a lot of her stuff because the needles that she swatched with and stuck in, they, they made a mark on it and they disqualified it. They told her to redo it. They made a mark yeah. on what? Of, the, of the pin that went into the went into the the fabric. She overblocked oh. with the pins, so it just distorted oh. her work. Yeah. Oh. I and said, "Whoa!" I, you got to be careful. I I was so she said she had to redo them and then reblock them and made sure she wasn't sticking it into the fabric. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And also, if you don't use the right kind of pen, they pin they can. Um, Rust, rust and leave little oh. rust marks. So you yeah. want to make sure you use pins that are rust stainless steel. Yes, yeah, stainless steel. Yeah, yeah, wow. Dritz quilting pins would be recommended. Mm. Yeah. Every uh, every once in a while on YouTube, you find someone who's doing the master class, and they say, "This is what happened." <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and and that's the reason why they say that you really do need to research a lot of your stuff and for level one the first report that you do is is the blocking report mm -hmm. and they've got a lot of cast on articles and things by master hand knitters about how to block so watch yeah. them wow <laughs> oh yep. frank I thought I'd show my that. That. oh wow oh wow That's gorgeous i have started the sleeve so cool. Yeah, the ribbon. Yeah, yeah. And oh, and you're finished at the ribbon. Oh, wow. That's so pretty. And so yeah. I am making progress. I, if I get oh, enough wow. knitting time in this week, I'll be done by next Saturday, I think. That's oh, cool. great. I really like how you did the different little bit of pattern on the shoulders. Yes. And how it joined up. That's just, it just looks so neat. That's yeah, really I love that. Nice I love the shoulder. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love the yeah. shoulder. Yeah, yeah. They are, that is oh, very nice. Yes. It's, it's very very nice. It's well, this does, this this doesn't have anything to do with your sweater, but I wanted to tell you that your puppy coloration matches you. Yeah, you got that <laughs> white mustache. <laughs> ah. There's a, the yeah, really? white here, and then you have kind of a little <laughs> sandy color here, and she's brown there. <laughs> And what's what's the dog's name? Chiquita. Oh, cute. Chiquita, Chiquita. came oh, from cute. Guatemala. No, oh, wow. Chi -chi. Oh. And uh, well, because you can't import dogs from Guatemala because of oh. a law that was made during the pandemic, oh. 
she had to go get over the border into Mexico and stay there for six months before they could import her. Apparently, you Oh, can wow. import dogs from Mexico, but not from Guatemala. <laughs> I don't know why there Can would be we that see difference. the puppy again? What? How did you, you want to see her again? puppy again? I missed the puppy. Oh, and my husband you're keeps not going to dying go with to see the puppy. It was so, when I think she was going even, to get a sweater. I mean, how did you even find one that was in Guatemala? Oh, and the organization sent her to San Francisco. Oh, wow. Come here. Yeah, let's see. Come here. Come here, Chiquita. Come, come. I'm not. <laughs> bashful now. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so, this I'll is my husband, Chuck. Hi. Hi, Chuck. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Oh, oh, he has the baby. He's big, and she's not used to being picked up. Uh, no, yeah. well, hi, baby. Yeah. Oh, see how, so so yeah. Look at see that. how they match. Oh, see the coloration. Yeah, match. Uh, it, does. it really does. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Chiquita. You don't like that so much, do you? Love that. Let's see if we can get you. Bye. <laughs> no. Bye, uh, Sumner's hubby. I, I bye, yeah, bye. the name. That's Chuck. Yeah. Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I put the link in the chat. It's Pacific Knit Company for anybody that wants to check out that book. Okay. okay. And that's, Thank you. that's where that's the woman's uh, Jamie Lomax's company. Okay. Very nice. Great. Well, thank you all for coming and um, for being supportive and um, giving me a moment to have a, a a nice visit with friends and feel safe and Absolutely. i hope you all are doing well and um we'll see you next week thank you bye-bye love to everybody yeah. lots of love yes. lots of love take it easy